morning, everybody. Everybody, good, good morning. Everybody roll over to the ES S&P 500. We're going to go over the, uh, the transitioning of these setups. All right, let's take a look at the S&P action this morning. Hey, Steve. And then we'll go back to crude. Hey, Adam. Ernie, good morning. So let's look at the S&P. Uh, I marked the institutional lines up last night. So I marked these up last night um, in yesterday's price action. Remember, I'm going to show you this in the next conference call, how to mark these lines up. We had a nice retest short here this morning just after uh, 6 o'clock and after um, almost uh, 7.45 this morning. This line I put on here last night right around, I don't know, what time was it? Around 2.30 in the afternoon yesterday. I put both these lines on here, and um, I'm going to show you how to do previous day institutional support and resistance. This is typically where the banks are looking to get long or short or some of your uh, top uh, algorithms, and it works great for support and resistance. In fact, it caught the low on crude this morning also, and I'll show you how to do it. So the next conference call, I'm going to show you how to draw these up, um, but this line I drew in yesterday, we had a nice uh, break retest here this morning. A couple times broke down retested right there is your reversal bar and breakdown retest there is your spinning top caught the high almost to the tick on both of them uh, from yesterday's line that I drew in so um, we'll just make here Gerald hold on one sec are the charts too big that's okay hold on one sec I'm gonna make uh, everything smaller just put it on the ES on the whole screen We don't need to see the profile chart. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So, so th this line, like I said, the supply, it's called supply demand line. And the next conference call for members, we're going to go over the algorithm that Gerald's going to be getting out to you and then also how to draw these lines in. They're very important. So I can see the next support that I have, the uh, next institutional support line. It's all the way down to 27 right around 27.15 or so. So we got some room for some downside, really big some room for some downside. So we have a minor blip here, minor blip that we're working on right now. We get through that, which is this top over here. We're looking for another small hit to the downside. Not really a small hit, but there's the next level. And then we have another level here. So we have some small minor blips on the way down, but this is where it mainly is our target. We're trying to see if we can get down to that level. But from here today, as far as today's trading, I'm looking for a 2780 move down below 2760. Or so right around 2750, 55 or so. Really a lot of downside in the S&P today potential. So just heads up on that. Really big downside potential. Uh, that we're working on right now. Beautiful short this morning. Like I said, right off of my level that I drew last night, it almost stopped at the tick of both times this morning, right here, right here. And now we're working through this level uh, as we speak. So the ultimate goal is to get down into the 27, uh, right around 27.15 or so. But you will have these stops ahead of time, right? There, right around, just right around 2760. So 2780 down to 2760. We got about a 20 point hit, looks like today, happening right now in the S&P that has a potential. So keep an eye on that, um, on a big heads up as far as that goes. I'll leave those up there for you, but um, we want to make sure that we understand these are levels that we want to play. So great retest short this morning on both those levels. Like I said, I'll show you how to draw those in. Uh, and it works on all charts. This is a nine Simrenko. It works on a daily chart, 240 minute chart. Whatever you want to draw these levels on, I'll show you exactly how to draw them in. Okay. Uh, this is drawn in on the nine Simrenko. I draw them only on the nine Simrenko, Ernie. All right. So what we want to do then is um, I want to show you the progression and how you can look for trade setups. Now, we know the best time to look for trades is on a full retracement. You're welcome, Ernie. 
full retracement. So when my oscillator gets down to here, it's called a full retracement. I want to show you a little technique we can use. It's called a full retracement. So once you get above 90% and you're in a downtrend, this obviously was a real big inflection point because it hit my institutional level, had a nice reversal. This is a 9 sim Rinko reversal. When you see a reversal in the 9 sim at a full retracement, what is in line next is the 5 sim Rinko, the one next to it. So you can see the high at uh, 2800 at this level. 2800 was this level right here on the 9 sim Rinko. So what you can do is if you see that just rolling down, which it did, nice big roll down, you want to look at that first J hook or that, um, that Gallagher pattern or, or that M top, that lazy M. And you want to look for the first retracement on the 5 Simrenko. This is one of the most powerful trades. I love the 9 and 5 together, and it works good because the 9 sets up the 5, the 5 sets up the 3. And they work in order because this set the, the 9 Sim Rinko was the high here at the institutional level. That's a 9 sim Rinko. But then once the 9 sim gets rolling down, you can watch for a full retracement on the 5 sim. And it happened on crude. It caught the high this morning on crude. I'll go over that in a second just like it. So I can check down. Once my 9 starts rolling over my larger time frame, I can look for a short setup. This lined up right on my symmetry dots. It had a beautiful inside uh, a candle in a, a spinning top which tells you it's a top potential top and that's your cell so that's your five Simrenko so then once a five gets going what you can do is you can start looking for your three sim to kick in and your three sim kicked in down here so it's a progression your five, your nine comes first, then your five retracement. If you really want to catch some of these major tops like this, which it caught today again on crude and gold, this combo right here is two long time frames that work together. Because typically it's a lower high on sales right at the institutional level. I see this pattern a lot at institutional levels. In fact, what you can do is you can play it here also, which you guys probably saw me playing around this morning. I ran a live trade. I ran a live trade right here this morning. You probably watched me do it because I kept messing around with both screens. Sold it right there on the S&P because that's a breakdown on the end top. I told you this pattern last week. That's your little Galaga pattern, inverted Galaga, which is actually a head and shoulders pattern. This is a head and shoulders. There's your shoulder. Inverted. It looks like an inverted Galaga. That's your head. That's an inverted head and shoulders pattern. What you can do is you can short the close below, the close below the shoulder. And I like my stop two bars back up. So if you hear, you get one, two. Stop is right here. That's where I like to place my stop. So if you do any Galaga patterns, like I was telling you, it looks like an inverted, I don't know if you guys ever play Galaga, but inverted ship right there. Or it looks like a... Uh, you know, it looks like um, a little W pattern M top. The the head and shoulders looks like little W patterns, but it's a lower high. In other words, the five sim you have a shot at it at the nine sim at the institutional level. You have your shot there. You got your shot at the five sim, which comes up next. Full retracement on the five sim after the nine gets rolling, and then you got your three sim shot, a smaller time frame down here. But you also got the neckline. On these, we call them the Galaga plays. Looks like a little Galaga ship, right? Right there is where it fires off. There's your little shoulders. <clears throat> On the M and W, you can break the neckline, and that broke the symmetry dots. You can short it here, stop loss two two bars back. Okay, so something you can you can do it. I actually did it right here. On I got one, only got a small contract though, but. It moved too fast. I couldn't get a lot of contracts filled, but you can see right here on the NASDAQ futures, I did the same thing. It broke the neck right there. It's breaking down pretty heavy. 71 shorts down to 31 right now, working out really good. But that 
the whole idea is nine sim. Then if once it gets rolling down, this was the institutional level up here. And then it comes back up to the five sim. You get another shot at it. Then you broke that W, which is a head and shoulders pattern. And then you get another shot at the three sim Rinko. Three sim got it short here, and now we're rolling. Nine, five, three. It is a progression that you can use. Hey, Derek, good morning. It's a progression that you can use in your trading. But like I said, you get a couple shots at it. You get four shots at trading this technique. You get one at the nine sim Rinko, one at the five sim Rinko, one break in the neckline of the inverted Galaga, or what's called a head and shoulders pattern. And then you get another shot at it at the three sim Rinko. So you had four shots at going short on the S&P this morning with my techniques. Um, nine at the institutional level, five after the nine gets rolling, three after the five gets rolling, and then the break of the neckline. All right, so that's the progression that you see. All right, that's the progression that you see in these markets. So really watch that those institutional lines, supply and demand lines. I'll show you, members, I'll show you how to do that. They are just great. I mean, it's kind of neat to know this level last night at 2.30 in the afternoon. At 2.30 in the afternoon, I drew this line up right here. And I had that on all evening. And how neat is it that it comes down to it, it breaks it and stops it right to the exact almost tick on both cells. Pretty neat little setup. So I'll show you how to do that. So now we're rolling again on the five. We got a five, I mean the nine sim Rinko's at a full retracement. Look at it react. So now the nine's roll, let's check down to our five sim Rinko. Nine's rolling, five sim Rinko. So there's your nine at the high of 78. And the nine just could not make it. But that would have been a cell setup right there. See how the nine is right here? Nine sim Rinko at the high is rolling. And we just missed the five sim Rinko. It's too weak right now, but it changed over here. But that would have been a sell on the overall five as far as that level goes. And then we check down to the three. Gerald, go over to uh, crude oil. So if we look at crude, I drew this line in last night. I drew this line in last night on crude. In fact, I drew it around, what, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and it caught the low on crude. This is our new support level, and this is our new resistance level at 20 and a half. What did I tell you guys when we were at 23 and a half? I said 20 and a half, I mean 20, um, 20, 30 to 20, 50. Look for, look for this market to uh, get support and resistance. That's where the supply came in. It really meandered around there for a long time yesterday. Then it finally broke. But this lower line was drawn in yesterday, yesterday afternoon. You see it come down to it and bounce off of it. Had some big demand there. So this is our demand. It had two double bottoms. I mean, two bottoms right here and here at the, um, at the levels. So what we want to do as traders in is we want to play off this line today. We want to play off 19, uh, and I, like I said, I'll show you how to draw this in. What I did is I drew this in from back here, which I'll show you right there, this low. Which I'll show you how to do this in the next class. They're easy to do, but they're really neat. You can see last week when I drew these in, we had some major plays. It caught, the low, it caught the high, it caught the retest short, it caught the high up here, it caught the low, caught the low, caught the low, then it break retest, then it caught the low down here, and then it broke, and it caught the low here. So I'll show you how to do this um, in the next class we have for members. But right now, uh, for today's session, we want to see that we have support here at 1930. We got resistance at 20. Right around 20, 2008, so right around the whole number. You're pretty close. 2008, in fact, I can, I can put it to the close. I'll put it down a little bit right there. It's going to be at the close of the bar. Right there is the exact number. So right around 20, 
2008, 2009. So this is what we want to do on crude oil then. I want to see us get through that level, look for a break, look for an institutional retest, supply demand line, and we should see lower lows. If this market's going to go back up, let's take a look at crude. We got a lot of area to the upside. Um, we will have some supply issues on the way up. Right here they are. I got my big supply level right there. Huge supply. I got huge supply right here. And I got minor supply right around there. So we do have minor levels up, but our overall will be back to the 2250 level. If we get rolling back above 2008, we have one right there. So if you do get above today about 2008, you're looking around 2070. You get around $700 worth of upside if it does break out. If it doesn't break, if it breaks down, this thing looks like it's going to get hit pretty hard, pretty fast. So it's going to be interesting on crude today. Do they do they hold the double or triple bottom? This is a triple bottom right now. It's a triple bottom. Do they hold the triple bottom or are they going to break it down below this lower supply uh, demand line? And if they do, look for the break retest because we are going to have some interesting plays if that happens. My point is, though, is that we want to look at looking at trading the nine and uh, and um, we want to look at trading the nine, five, and three. And it's the nine, once it gets rolling, you get a full retracement on the five and then you get a possible three. The three never closed below the low of this bar, so it never really activated. I want to close below the low. Never did, so that creates demand right there. So, But you can see the 9 and 5 worked well. Three never even got us in, never pulled us in. But the 9 goes first, then the 5, then the 3. Okay? I want to really do a video on that because it's very important for you to understand that is – the large time frame goes first, then the intermediate time to look for a full retracement. So if I'm coming off, if I come up here and touch this high again at 2010 for a sell, and the nine's rolling over, then you look for a five retracement, then you look for a three. If I break out, let's say, if I break out of 1930 this morning, and I start heading down below it, I'm going to look for a nine retracement, get a negative reversal on nine, let the nine start rolling, immediately check over to my five, look for the five full retracement, get involved with the five. Once the five starts rolling over, I can check down to my three and go into a three trade. Nine, five, three. That's why I got an order left to right analysis. It's a really neat way to uh, trade the markets because it's very, very effective when you're, um, when you're trading off these support and resistance lines. Okay. So let's look at these supply demand lines. We'll, we'll see if we get outside this. Obviously, once we get outside, we'll look for some speed. Um, right now, we do have – get this off here. Right now, we do have uh, the S&P needs to break above 2,800. So today, the S&P has got to get above 2,800. If it gets above 2,800, look for the retest, and then we come up to right around – this level right here, which is 2830. So you get about 30 points of upside on the S&P if we get above 2800. If not, we're going to still look for lower lows.